started with FDA's Center for Drug Evaluation and Research Small Business and Industry Assistance Program, also known as CEDAR SBIA. Thank you so much for joining us today for a presentation entitled Optimizing Your Study Data Submissions to FDA, Updates from CEDAR and CEBA. The webinar will be posted in its entirety, both video and audio, on our website within five days. And that website is www.fda.gov slash CEDAR SBIA webinars. And that's webinars with an S on the end. Before we begin, I would like to cover some details. Since presentation are visible from your screen in that little box in, in the previous download slide. This activity has been approved. Eligible for the edition of the survey, which will remain open for two weeks, and when it's the survey and certificate are available only to those who attend the live event. That means if the webinar once it's posted on our website, they will not be eligible for the certificate or the survey. Even if you don't need a certificate, we would very much appreciate it if you let us know your comments via the survey. To outline today's events, the webinar in its entirety will run approximately 1.5 hours. We will have three distinct presentations to be followed by a Q&A session. First up will be the presentation entitled Updates to the Study Data Technical Conformance Guide given by Dr. Ron Fitzmartin, PhD, MBA, Senior Advisor in the Office of Strategic Programs within CEDAR. Secondly, we will have the presentation entitled Providing Clinical Study Data to the Office of Vaccines, which will be co-presented by Drs. Brenda Baldwin and Kurt Prutzman both of whom are with the Division of Vaccines and Related Product Applications within CEBA's Office of Vaccines Research and Review. And then our final presentation will be Perspectives from CEBA's Office of Compliance and Biologics Quality, given by Banu Khan from the Bioresearch Monitoring Branch within CEBA. So let's begin and welcome Dr. Fitzmartin. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, hi, everyone. Nice to uh, be here again. Um, I'm going to give a brief update on the TCG, but before that, just uh, a couple of uh, background slides. Oh, okay. Um, standard uh, disclaimer. So, study data standards, road ahead and road left behind. Uh, 2016 is on. We're now 2017. And unless you've been living under a rock for the past several years, uh, study data standards are now required at FDA for CEDAR and CBER. So, what I thought uh, for those that may have been living under a rock for the past several years, um, that just give you a quick one slide up overview as to how we got to this point. So we have a FDA statute that was back in 2012. Um, it was called uh, 745A. Certainly over the years, uh, those that uh, are aware of this have heard about 745A, um, which then uh, also translates into the uh, 21 uh, United States Code 379. So that framework um, gave the FDA the authorization to develop binding guidances. First time that has ever happened, binding guidances. And so the first guidance was the 745A guidance. Basically, that just said that FDA will implement individual binding guidances. So it just talked about the the law and said, look at the individual content guidances for direction on what is required 
by FDA with respect to study data um, standards and any other standard, um, data standards that are in regulatory submissions of NDAs, BLAs, uh, ANDAs, and INDs. So below, you see the first two guidances, binding guidances, that are now final, the e-study guidance, which is focused um, solely on standardized study data, and the ECTD guidance, which requires the ECTD format. And if you go to the far right, you see that um, FDA has a number of other binding guidances, either in draft or proposed. Um, so uh, it has the authority not only for study data, but for other um, types of information data that are submitted in regulatory uh, applications. So um, just uh, some slides, because this is a TCG update. Um, many of you on, on the line know about the TCG. It's, we're now at version 3.3. That was uh, issued March of 2017. It, is, it focuses on how to. How can uh, sponsors submit better standardized data? It's the most up-to-date guide for submitting standardized study data to CBER and CEDAR. So um, please refer to that um, not only uh, on a regular basis, but certainly when we provide updates, which we do provide updates uh, March and October of each year. Sometimes there's an interim update depending upon the criticality of the information that we want to get to sponsors. Um, going forward from this webinar, we will uh, plan on doing a series on the TCG update. So we're going to try to do an update um, every time a, a TCG is posted, a new version is posted. So stay tuned for perhaps a webinar in the uh, November or December time frame. So just a couple of things. Again, this uh, TCG 3.3 has been out since um, March, so many of you have seen it, and we are now starting the pl our plans for the October version. Um, and so the next couple of slides just talks about the areas that have been updated. The first uh, in section 2.3, um, instead of um, there was a capitalized ADRG.PDF, um, we would prefer that the um, document come in as PDF, but come in um, as a lowercase ADRG um, in the ECTD. Uh, in 4.1.1.3, there is, was a clarification of the disposition category variable. Um, there is a typo there. It is DSSCAT as it is specified in the TCG. So that is a typo. We'll correct that before the final PDF of these presentations are posted. There's, um, we've had a tremendous amount of uh, support um, on uh, SEND um, from our Office of Computational Science, uh, uh, Sciences uh, folks um, and the industry. So there's uh, um, a lot of updates on SEND. So if you're um, interested in, into um, the uh, standardization for animal data, please take a look at those sections. Um, in 5.1, we updated and clarified the therapeutic areas are not data standards. So um, they are components, extensions, if you will, of the CDIS foundational standards. So you will not see a Federal Register notice that says that FDA um, supports and requires a therapeutic area standard. They are extensions of STTM or ADAM. So um, we. We wanted to make that clear to industry. Um, also in that section on uh, therapeutic areas, we added um, the uh, diabetic uh, kidney disease, Ebola, kidney transplant, malaria, and uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So those extensions of the SDTM, FDA now uh, supports. And there's additional information on some of those TAs in the TCG. There was a, um, as many of you know, there was an, uh, a large rewrite of the data validation section. 
and we wanted to make it clear to industry that there are three different types. One is what the SDOs have started to provide now uh, is the uh, conformance rules when they release a version of, for example, SDTM. Um, and uh, many of you are aware of the technical rejection um, criteria that we have. That is certainly uh, very much separate from um, the validation rules. And um, uh, we're not going to go into that uh, here. The TCG is, again, focused on submitting standardized study data. And so TCG doesn't necessarily need to focus on technical rejection criteria for standardized study data. And then there's the section on business and validator rules, which um, talks about how these rules are used to support regulatory review and analysis. And again, in the um, sections, uh, section eight on uh, traceability and validation, um, there's more uh, information on uh, SEND. So uh, some quick points. Um, the study data standardization plan, um, we are recommending that the, um, we use, and it mentions this in the TCG, the, um, the general investigational plan, which is located in ECTD M1. You see the section listed there. We, we get a number of comments and questions on that. Um, we want define.xml, right? Not define.pdf. Uh, when we go forward and we turn on the rejection criteria, um, we don't want to reject submissions because sponsors have submitted only define.pdf. Um, so the define.xml um, is required and it needs to be printable as well. So TS, uh, trial summary um, uh, from the trial design domain. Uh, the trial summary.xpt uh, is a must. We need it for legacy uh, studies that start prior to December 17th, 2016, so that we can actually know that they started um, prior to the, um, that, uh, the required date of 12-17, um, and so that we can um, uh, not reject your submission. Um, so the TS.XPT is required. If you want to submit uh, other uh, trial summary, um, uh, trial design uh, data sets, you can do that as well, and also a uh, define if you'd like. Um, and the last bullet there, um, FDA has not published the 30-day notice date for technical rejection due to stand non-standardized study data. It says on our website, on the document, that we will give the 30 days notice. We will give uh, at least 30 days notice um, when we're going to do that. Right now, we are in a testing mode. Um, both CEDAR and CBER are in a testing mode of those criteria. And, but we will make sure that you're well aware when we're going to turn that on. So with that, um, I just want to say that if you have any questions, any comments about the uh, TCG, um, you could send them to the eData team. As I said, we're going through the summer now, um, looking at the new version for October. So uh, this is a great time for you to submit um, any comments, any clarifications you think we need to add to the TCG. So thank you very much. And with that, I will turn it over to Brenda. Uh, 